Hey y'all, welcome to Fruity Makers. I'm Amanda and today we're canning blueberry pie filling. I'm so excited, it is scrumptious. Last year I did it for the first time. I did about, I think I did 14 quarts last year too. And so I'm doing the same amount this year because we we want it to stay something special so we only have it about once a month. By doing it um, in quarts, you can have like two, maybe two desserts out of that. So we tend to like take one to like a friend or a family gathering, that kind of thing, and then have some at home, and that's a quart, and we do that about once a month, and it lasts all year. So it's a really special treat for us to have this. I don't make it often, and so that's what I'm canning today. A few things that make it a little easier are to, you know, obviously have all your stuff set out, all your canning stuff. And when I pick blueberries and I wash it all, I put it in, I have huge bowls, and I go ahead and measure this out. So it's six quarts of blueberries for um, seven quarts of pie filling. So I'm making seven quarts. That's what fits in my canner comfortably. And um, so I just go ahead and mix or measure this out. It just makes it way easier the next morning when I usually do my canning to already have everything measured. Everything's ready to go. I've got my jars clean, lids out. I'm ready to rock and roll. So today that's what we're doing and I'm gonna give you guys the ingredients as we go along. Here in my big stock pot I have six cups of sugar and two and one quarter cups of ultra gel. This is what I'm using to can with. I feel like it's a safer option than cornstarch. Um, do your own research and make your own mind up about that. But this is what I use and I'm very happy with the results thus far. To my sugar and ultra gel, I'm adding seven cups of cool water straight from my Barky filter. You don't want to use chlorinated or fluorinated water for canning. I'm going to turn this on medium heat. You're going to stir this very, very well and you're going to bring it to a bubble. It's going to start bubbling up in a minute. Once that water hits it, the ultra gel automatically starts thickening. Ultra gel does not have to be hot to thicken. So you want to make sure you're stirring it from the beginning. You may actually want to whisk this so that you don't get any lumps of the ultra gel in there. See right there at the edge, you can see there's a lump there. And we're trying to get all of those lumps out. And you're just going to bring this to a bubble. So I've had this going for about 20 minutes. I traded to a spatula. It's just easier to make sure I'm getting the bottom. You don't want this to scald, but you see all of these little bubbles and you hear that? Bubbles at the bottom. So there are little bubbles in this all the way through. So that's when you know it is time to put in the lemon juice. So next we're gonna put in half a cup of lemon juice. I'm going to continue to stir this very slowly. Make sure you get the middle. Make sure you're scraping the bottom. Be careful that it doesn't splash up on you. It's very, very hot at this point. We're going to let it reach a boil and we're going to boil this for one minute with the lemon juice. As you can see, the liquid is starting to move on its own. It is boiling at this point. This is not water. It's very, very thick. So it's not going to boil like water would. It's not going to come to a rolling boil. It's going to boil more like a very, very thick gravy. So you want to make sure that you are still scraping the bottom. You don't want this to scald or scorch on the bottom. It will ruin the whole pot. It's been a full minute. I'm going to start to drop my blueberries in a little at a time. You're going to fold these in. But my bowl is just too big to just dump them in all at once, so. As you can see, my blueberries absolutely fill up this pot. This is my largest pot, though. So my only option is to just be very careful. You have to mix this very thoroughly. Just be very careful. And you can see it's the gel is coming to the top. It takes a few more moments than it should just because my pot is so full, but that's okay. 
work with what you have. Don't go out and get something new. Work with what you have. It may take you a moment more, but that's okay. Okay, so I just finished filling my jars and you want to make sure with this pie filling that you do not overfill your jars and just um, I've done that before and it runs everywhere and so just as a precaution I'm gonna take a little bit out of some of these and just put in a dish this is just a dish I can put in the refrigerator and we really enjoy this as a treat over yogurt or in cereal or like with granola this is just wonderful it tastes amazing and it's a treat so I actually go a little bit below that one inch headspace that's recommended because I have had these ooze out in the canner before and it's a huge mess and then they don't seal and it's just awful so um, this little bit will go over some yogurt later or something like that next I'm going to take a paper towel that I've put some white vinegar on I'm just gonna wipe my rims really well you want to make sure that there's nothing sticky. See, all that is on the rim, even though I used my uh, funnel. But if they're sticky and such, it's not going to have a, as good a seal, or there's a chance that it won't seal. So you just want to be very careful. Be very mindful about cleanliness when you're canning. Make sure that you're aware of what you're touching and what you're doing when you're canning. It's just vital. Not only for a good seal, but for the safety of the produce that's inside. So I'm going to wipe these really well. And I always use vinegar when I wipe my rims. 